Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a direct labor budget for a period of three months. Now, this is a relatively new topic on the CSEC syllabus. It was put there in 2017 for first examination in 2019, but as of the date of the recording of this video, which is in May 2021, it has not yet been brought on any CSEC PUA exam. So I want you to be prepared should it appear on your exam. So in the current iteration of the CSEC PUA syllabus, this topic can be found in section 11, along with such other things as employees pay, preparation of business plans, schedule of cash projections, sales budgets, production budgets. Now the exact wording, they don't actually have the word direct labor budget, but they have production inputs. And if you're familiar with manufacturing accounts, we know that the inputs to the production process are materials, labor, and overhead. And in this video, I'm going to be, as I said, specifically dealing with the direct labor budget. And with that said, let's take a look at the information. Okay, so it says the direct labor budget. This budget shows the number of direct labor hours and the associated cost of same required to meet production targets for a given period of time. So as I mentioned before, I'm not really going to go into a whole set of theory behind budgeting, but suffice it to say, a budget is a plan. And when getting into business or when already in business, we need to have plans in place in order to deal with of the foresee first of all possible problems and therefore have time to come up with solutions to deal with those problems. And whether providing goods or services, labor will definitely be involved. So we need to know, do we have enough labor to meet our production targets or our service targets? And if we do, do we have enough money to pay them? I'll give you a personal example. For me, when I was starting up my private teaching thing, I wanted to teach PUA, POB, Econ, Maths and Ad Maths at both the O and A level. So if you, uh, <laughs> if you take a look there, you're going you're gonna to see, I think um, it was five subjects and I think four classes, right? Because I wanted to teach at the Form 4, Form 5 and Form 6 level. So whatever the grid looks like. So when we did the multiplication, I wanted to teach that many classes. But the thing is, there were seven days in a week and I had two sessions I did to teach. So seven by two is 14. So I think you could see there was a bit of a shortfall in my available sessions and the desired sessions. So I had to make a decision as to what I ultimately wanted to teach, which was to cut it down to POA, maths, and add maths. And eventually I added Cape Accounting. And on top of that, I teach my subjects twice a week because I believe it needs, things need time to settle in people's brain and we need to give people time to absorb material. But anyhow, that's a whole different video, a discussion for next time. I wanna get into what the direct labor budget is right now. But at least I'm hopefully, hopefully right now, you have an appreciation for why we need to, to budget and to plan. Because if you wanna do all of that and you only have this available um, set of resources, it's not gonna work, okay? So maybe I could have hired other teachers, but I didn't want to manage people, all right? Or maybe I could have decided to teach each class once a week and maybe for an hour or whatever the case was. So there were different ways to mix it up. But ultimately, I chose two sets of two hour classes per week because I felt personally that that is what students need to, to, do, to do well. Anyhow, let's get into the material. Okay, so the direct labor budget. So this budget shows the number of direct labor hours and the associated cost of same required to meet production targets for a given period of time. So let's take a look at the example. So it says example to have no increases. So we have Pete Aquil is scheduled to produce 5,000 units of output for each of the first six months of 2018. Okay, each unit of output requires two direct labor hours to be completed. Each direct labor hour costs $10 per hour. Prepare a direct labor budget for the first three months of 2018. Okay, so as you know, make sure to head up properly whenever you're doing any kind of statement or solution. So we want to produce 5,000 units of output per month for the first six months. So units of output to be produced for Jan, Feb, and March, 5,000. And to find out how much, how many labor hours we need, we need to multiply the number of units by the number of hours it takes for a single unit to be completed, which is two. So in each column here, we're gonna put a two for this row, which is number of direct labor hours required per unit. And of course, we're gonna multiply going down. And 5,000 by two in each case will give us 10,000. So that's how many direct labor hours we need. Now, how much does that cost? So if you go back up to the information, we see that it says each direct labor hour costs $10 per hour. Okay, so all we have to do is multiply by 10 in each column, and that's gonna give us $100,000 worth of direct labor for each month. Okay, so this one is relatively simple. Let's scroll down so you can see your example. Okay, so it says Peter Parker is scheduled to produce 8,000 units of output for each of the first six months of 2017. 
Each unit of output requires four direct labor hours to be completed, and each direct labor hour costs $5. Prepare a direct labor budget for the first three months of 2017. So I'm going to give you guys the format this time. So what I want you to do is take a pause, take a read, try the question, and then unpause so we can correct. Okay, did you try it? How was it? Was it bad? Was it good? Let's take a look. The important part is you tried. So we are going to produce 8,000 units of output per month. And each unit of output requires four units of direct, sorry, four hours of direct labor. And therefore, to find out the total number of labor hours needed per month, we'll simply multiply going down. And in each case, it was simply 8,000 by four, which is 32,000. And each unit, sorry, each hour of direct labor costs $5. So all we have to do to find the total cost of direct labor in any given month here is multiply the total number of hours by five, the cost per labor hour. And that gives us 160,000. Okay, let's take a look at a slightly more involved example. Okay, so in this example, it says volume increases. So Val Armagulis is scheduled to produce 10,000 units of output in Jan 2012. And production is expected to grow by 2,000 units of output per month for each of the next five months. Each unit of output requires two direct labor hours to be completed. Each direct labor hour costs $5 per hour. Well, $5. Prepare a direct labor budget for the first three months of 2012. Okay, so again, we know what to do. Head up properly. Make sure your columns have their proper headings too. So let's start off with the number of units of output to be produced each month. They tell us 10,000 in January and expected to grow by 2,000 units per month for each of the next five months. So we're going to start with 10,000 in January. If it's going to increase by 2,000, 10,000 plus 2 is 12. And we increase by 2,000 again, giving us 14 for March. So 10 plus 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Each unit of output requires two units, two hours of direct labor to be completed. And to find the total number of direct labor hours we need, we'll simply multiply going down in each column. 10,000 by 2 is 20, 12,000 by 2 is 24, 14 by 2 is 28. And to find how much each of those costs, we will multiply them by the cost per labor hour, which in this case is 5 dollars per hour, which will give us in the case of January, 20,000 by 5 is 100,000, 24,000 by 5 is 120,000, and in March, 28,000 by 5 is 140,000. Okay, so we have just one change in this type of question relative to the previous type, so time for you to try one. Okay, so it says that Ari Yastak plans to produce 20,000 units of output in Jan 2014, and production is expected to increase by 5,000 units per month for each of the next five months. Each unit of hour requires a half hour of direct labor to be completed. Hmm, we have a fraction. Oh my gosh. Each direct labor hour costs $10 per hour. Now prepare a direct labor budget for the first three months of 2040. Okay, so I want you guys to take a pause, take a read, and then unpause so we can correct. Okay, did you try it? How did it go? Let's, let's take a look. So again, don't forget to head up properly headings and columns. So let's start with the number of units to be produced. So it says here that it's 20,000 in Jan and expected to increase by 5,000 per month for the next five months. So we have 20,000 in Jan, 20,000 plus five is 25, and 25 plus five is 30. Next, we need to know how many direct labor hours will be required. Uh, so they told us a half an hour. So I know that some of you might have been like, oh, a fraction, what's going on there? All you have to do is multiply by a half or divide by two. Right, so 20,000 by 0.5 is 10, 25 by 0.5 is 12.5, 30 by a half is 15. And it costs $10 per labor hour. So all we have to do now is multiply each of those values by 10. So we're gonna get in January 100,000, February 125, and March 150. All right, one more example, one more question and we're done. All right, so this one says volume and price increases. So X and Bacon is scheduled to produce 12,000 units of output in Jan 2013, and production is expected to grow by 3,000 units per month for each of the next five months. Each unit of output requires three labor hours to be completed, so no fraction this time, and each direct labor hour costs $5 per hour, and the cost is expected to rise by a dollar per month for the next five months. Prepare a direct labor budget for the first three months. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So units to be produced, let's start there. So it says 12,000 units of output in Jan and expected to grow by 3,000 per month. So we know what's going to happen there, right? 12 plus 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. 
each unit of output requires three labor hours to be completed. So we're going to multiply each of those numbers by three. 12 by three is 36, 15 by three is 45, 18 by three is 54. Uh, each, right, so each direct labor hour costs $5 per hour and is expected to rise by a dollar per month for the next five months. So we're going to start with five in January, right? 36 by five is 108. And then, this is 108. I think that should be 180. Yeah, 150 plus it is 180, right? Then it's going to increase by a dollar. 45 by six, I believe is 270. And then it's going to increase by a dollar again. And that's going to give us its time, 368, 378, sorry. All right. Okay, so time for you to try a question. All right, so let's take a read first. So Dane Eris is scheduled to produce 10,000 units of output in Jan 2016. And production is expected to grow by 2,500 units per month for each of the next five months. Each unit of output requires four direct labor hours to be completed. And each direct labor hour costs $10 per hour, and the cost is expected to rise by a dollar per month for the next five months. And they want a direct labor budget for the first three months of 2016. Okay, so take a pause, take a reread, and try the question. Okay, how did it go? Wasn't that bad, right? Or was it? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, so of course, don't forget to head up properly. You get marks for that. So units to be produced. So 10,000 in January, and expected to increase by 2,500 units per month for the next five months. So 10,000 in January, plus 2,500 is 12,005, plus 2,500 is 15,000. Now each unit requires four direct labor hours to be completed. So we're going to multiply by four. We're going to get these values here for the total number of labor hours required. Now the cost, they cost $10 per hour, but it's expected to increase by a dollar per month for the next five months. So we're going to get 10, 11, and 12, right? Because it starts off, at 10, starts off at 10, increases by 1 to 11, and increases by 1 again to 12. We multiply and going down, 40,000 by 10 is 400, 50,000 by 11 is 550, 60,000 by 12 is 720. Okay guys, so that's about it for the direct labor budget. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I release a new video. Check out my website for some free payway handouts. And as per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.